So, Katie Faust, um, I heard about her a few years ago. She went viral for being super controversial because this is a woman that grew up with lesbian parents, but she opposes gay marriage now, um, which is kind of crazy because, I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like most people are very defensive when it comes to their mom and their dad. And this is her story. And I wanted to, like, talk about this story just because it's pride month and i think a lot of times people think that christians are just hating on the lgbt community and they're just hateful but there is a science behind the fact that um two men or two women cannot raise a family the same way a man and a woman can and there's been plenty of examples this is katie foss is not the first person to speak out against this there's been plenty of numerous examples of people growing up in gay households and they feel like there's something that was just off in their upbringing and so this is her story our next guest katie faust serves on the academic and testimonial council of the international children's rights institute as you heard in tom eagleton's story she's a fierce opponent of same-sex marriage despite being raised by same-sex parents and describing her mother as a loving gay parent she's in canberra to lobby against same-sex marriage katie faust joins us now from parliament house thanks for being there thanks so much for having me have you actually managed to speak to any australian politicians yet we did um my my partner in crime, Millie Fontana, who is a resident of Melbourne and also raised by two mothers, um, and I had a chance to speak with a couple members of Parliament yesterday. Not the Prime Minister so far? No, no. Um, he hasn't called yet. Um, now, how is it that the daughter of lesbian mothers has become a leading opponent of gay marriage? How does that work? Well, simply because I recognize that while my mother was a fantastic mother, and most mm -hmm. of what I do well as a mother myself I do because that's how she parented me, she can't be a father. Mm -hmm. Her partner, an incredible woman, both of these women have my heart, cannot be a father either. Children have a right to be in relationship with their mother and father whenever possible. And as a society, we shouldn't normalize a family structure that requires children to lose one or both parents to be in that household. Now, trying to sway the U.S. Supreme Court to rule against gay marriage, you wrote to Justice Anthony Kennedy uh, before that vote, and you said, you used to say, I'm happy my parents got divorced so I could get to know all you wonderful women. Now you seem to be saying that was all a lie. Well, there's a lot of pressure on children of gay parents to please their parents, to sort of carry the banner forward for them. Um, and you can read about this not just in conservative publications, but even books like Family Like Families Like Mine, um, which was publicized by a pro-gay marriage. Uh, daughter of um, gays and she admitted and several of the kids in that book admitted that it's very difficult to be honest about this because of the political pressure surrounding this topic uh, there's several children that have contacted me even since I started writing about this saying I agree with you but I'll never come out and speak about this publicly because my relationship with my parent is too tenuous now Katie did you find God uh, somewhere in this journey towards anti-gay marriage well I was not not raised a Christian, um, but I did become a Christian in high school. And did that change things? I mean, did you decide that uh, homosexuality was against the scriptures, uh, against God's will, something of that nature? Well, I, uh, it took a long time, honestly, for me to get on board with what biblical sexuality says, because there's a very fierce protectiveness, I think, that all children have for their parents. Mm -hmm. um, but what yeah. I was delighted to find That's when true. I read scripture is that God has an incredible heart for the orphan, and mm -hmm. that he's very concerned with the plight of children. And mm -hmm. that yeah. lines up very much with where we need to go in this discussion, yeah. which is focusing on the rights of children primarily as opposed to emphasizing the desires of adults, which tend to take center stage when we're talking about this issue. Now, after your parents divorced, because you originally had a father and a mother, they divorced. Your father, you say, went off with other women. Why have you focused your main criticism on the homosexual part of the equation and not your father? Well, I... I think that I'm pretty fair in my statements to say that whether you're heterosexual or homosexual, children have rights. And adults, the onus needs to be on adults to conform to the rights of children rather than children fitting into an adult's lifestyle. And certainly, uh, I don't think that 
homosexuals are responsible by any means for the crisis that we face in America when it comes to family structure these days. Absolutely, heterosexuals have led the way on that charge. I got into this discussion primarily because what I heard from the gay lobby was that Children don't care who's raising them, right? That children are just fine if it's two men or two women. And the reality is that anybody that's talked to a child who has lost a parent, whether through divorce, abandonment, third-party reproduction, or death, kids absolutely care. Mm -hmm. Family structure matters to children. And so I heard the LGBT yeah. lobby saying it doesn't care. They yeah, don't care. And I... I don't think that that's reality. Okay, um, you also were motivated politically once President Obama announced his support for same-sex marriage, and you set up an anonymous blog called Ask the Bigot. Why did you do that? What did you call it that to start with, and what happened when you did it? Yes, well, you know, strangely, the URL wasn't taken for that uh, web name. Not sure why, but it was kind of born in an angry moment. I'm not really a confrontational person, but what happened when Obama evolved is to me it felt like media was free to play the bigot card. So now everybody that doesn't support gay marriage is a bigot, right? Because either you're isolated and you don't know any gay people or you're indoctrinated or you're homophobic or you're the equivalent of a racist. And they were not giving any attention to people that had a genuine argument, a well-founded, secular, convincing argument for support of traditional marriage. And so I started blogging anonymously. You, you, that's, I was going to make that point. You started blogging anonymously. What happened? Why, why did you go public, as it were? I didn't. I was outed by a gay blogger who felt like... Um, I needed to be held accountable for my stance. And the truth is that I would not have filed a brief with the Supreme Court. Um, I wouldn't be having this interview with you today because I never intended to be involved in the legal fight. But because I was outed in the name of love and tolerance, I am talking with you today. Okay, so uh, just going to that Supreme Court decision. In June, Justice Kennedy authored, the same man you wrote to, authored the Supreme Court's decision in favour of same-sex marriage. He began in agreement with you, saying that no union is more profound than marriage. But he said of the gay people who had petitioned the court, it would be to misunderstand these men and women to say they disrespect the idea of marriage. Their plea is that they respect it so much, respect it so deeply that they seek to find its fulfilment for themselves. And now obviously the court agreed that their dignity was the critical thing here. Why do you disagree with that position? Well, because they have dignity, right? Single parents have dignity. People that have never been married have dignity. You don't gain dignity uh, by a government bestowing that on you. You just have it. The question is not whether or not they're, they have dignity. And the question is not even really whether or not they have the capacity to love and commit the way heterosexuals do. They do. They absolutely do. The question is, what is, what is government's interest in marriage? It's really not about affirming the connections that we have with one another. It has to do with the product of those unions. And there's something distinct about the product of a union between heterosexuals. What's distinct is that they make babies. And those babies have rights. And those babies deserve protection. Katie Faust, we'll have to leave you there. Thank you. Um... I really like, there was a lot she said. Um, one thing that really stood out to me is that a lot of people act like kids don't care who they're being raised by, and that is not true. Like, kids care. They are very aware, and I don't think I've ever met a child or a, you know, a teenager, a young adult who didn't desire to be raised by a mom and a dad. Yeah, they've become accustomed to it. They've learned to, most of my friends have been raised by single moms and that's the way it happens because they had no choice, but they didn't desire that. They wanted to have a dad. They want to grow up with their fathers. Um, and a lot of times like they've had to find validation in other things and they've got themselves in so much trouble, try to fill a hole in their lives because their parents their parents weren't together or there was one parent that was missing like their dad wasn't there or their mom wasn't there or maybe both of them weren't there every child desires to be raised by a mom and a dad because that's the way that god ordained it that's the way that god made it is for a mom and a dad to raise a family not a mom and a mom or a dad and a dad but a dad and a mom because there's something that only a dad can give his child or only a mom can give his child that the other gender can 
can't. And so I really love that Katie Foss is literally like, you can't question her because she is an example of this. She is proof that this is not what children desire because she was once a child with two moms who were gay and yes, they raised her well. They loved her. And she even admits to that. There is no pride in that sense. She's not out here lying on their behalf saying that they abused her. But she's saying that this is not the way children should be raised. And she is living proof of that that she didn't like it and most kids who are grown growing up in those households have this pressure of saying oh yeah it's amazing it's awesome they feel this pressure because of the um, political status behind this issue and how popular this issue is um, and how if you say anything against it people are just going to go against you saying you're ungrateful you're hateful all of these terrible things um, saying you're bigoted which you're not you know you're just being honest about your upbringing and I think every single child desires to be raised in a two-parent household of the opposite sex every every single child and that's the way that God created it to be and we naturally desire those things because God created us so that's how we desired it that way so Katie Foss is you know I know that this is like an old case an old story but I think that's something still important and why that why God made it one man and one woman that most people in pride month you know don't want to accept i feel like pride month lately has just become more of like this orgy like this huge orgy i've seen in parades um i know last year my friend was driving past la and he said he saw guys naked in their bikes in the name of pride and it disgusted him so much he was so angry because kids see that he didn't want to see that you know so i feel like lately pride month has been more because people are just horny and they just want to celebrate like their sexuality and all of these things that should not it does it should not be like the whole your whole identity is your sexuality i think that's very sad if that's all you base your identity off your identity should be as a child of god but that correlates to you know um that's also a part of like a man and a man being together and a woman and a woman where it just contradicts what God had created, what he intended it to, to be. And that's why so many people nowadays are just lost. You know, people who grow up in that kind of family, they're lost. They're like, how do I become a man for for girls? How do I become a woman or for, you know, a, a man growing up in, like a little boy growing up in a, in a household of two guys with two um, gay fathers like how do I treat women? How do I get used to this feminine er energy? Just It's just a very contradicting. It's a lot of issues that go into one. And it's sad because Pride Month doesn't really celebrate family culture. I feel like even like gay families, it's not really celebrated as much as like the sexuality behind it and people just wanting to like sleep around and show off their bodies and just anarchy completely. And I, I'm going to go this Saturday actually to a festival. Um, I'm not going to go there for the festival, but I'm going to go there because we're... Um, helping out um prostitutes we're gonna go um evangelize to people on the streets women on the streets so they're also gonna have an event that day as well so we're probably i'm probably gonna see a lot of what's going on with pride month which is just crazy just how it's being so like shoved down our throats um but this is a devil, you know, this is this is evil and this is evil fighting um, the good in the world. And we have to continue fighting and praying for these people and praying for the children who grow up in this, these situations and don't have any say and are, feel like they're pressured to agree, even though they don't, even though they, they wish that they had a mom or they wish they had a dad, you know. But at the end of the day, God is the father to the fatherless and he will be a mom to the ones who don't have a mom. He is both. Because he created both, so he knows how to be both. But yeah, this is a, such a crazy story. I know it's old, but I think it's still so relevant today. So let me know you guys' thoughts, and I'm out.